Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I'm Dennis. I'm here with Jason Lucas today. Jason, thanks for uh, thanks for helping us out here today. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. It's it's really good to be here. This is uh this is super exciting stuff. It's our first episode, hopefully of many. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get together with people from in and around town, and we're gonna discuss community events. We're gonna discuss things that we like about Thompson, things that we don't like about Thompson. What we want to see better happen. Um, and Jason has honored us today by being our first guest. All right. So we're gonna get right down to it. Jason, uh, a lot of people know you. You're an artist around town. Uh, your stuff's kind of literal, literally, literally littered all over the place on the walls. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the first question is, how old were you when you first decided that, hey, I'm good at this stuff? Well, actually, I was probably in my like grade two. I was selling drawings of uh, Spider-Man, Ninja Turtles and stuff on the playground. I was just a kid for like a quarter dollar two bucks i used to do them for free and then my mom said you know what you can't be giving away your drawings for free so i've been selling art since i was in grade two and then i guess growing up through elementary school the teachers would always say oh you, you have so much talent and you're doing so well you're going to be a famous artist and all this so growing up i always thought oh i'm going to be a famous artist because everybody was telling me that I didn't really know what that entailed, but until this day, it hasn't really changed. I still want to be that famous artist. That's actually super awesome, man. The idea of uh, starting off so young, uh, especially doing the stuff that you know every kid likes. I mean, who, what kid isn't going to spend a quarter on a, a picture of Spider-Man or Superman or whatnot? Uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, so with, with that being said, and you've been doing this for so long, when did it finally hit you that, hey, I could do this as a full-time job mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, support myself? I don't think I really realized that it would become a full-time uh, career until after college. Um, when I finished high school, I was kind of just bumming around for a bit. And then we decided, or my sister was moving out to Vancouver, so... I ended up moving out to Vancouver with her and I fell upon kind of art school almost by accident. I went and I loved it and then after that I had odd jobs as you know a cook and I was washing cars and stuff and I had sold art a lot up until then but I'd always had to have that part-time job. And so I guess it would be after art school I figured you know what I can't, not that I can not keep doing these jobs but I knew I wanted to at least try and take the risk and see if and I could do it full more, time. Right? Yeah. You wanted to do more of it. Definitely. So it was a conscious decision to go, you know what? I quit my job and I dedicated 100% of my time to my art. And I've been doing art full time since then. So touching back to that, so, and I didn't know this either. So you actually went to art school. Yes. This, you didn't just, you know, make paintings and do drawings and just decide, hey, well, I can keep doing this. Mm -hmm. So there's actually the education behind that. Definitely. And have you felt that that's helped you out a lot? Definitely. Awesome. Yes. Training, education, it's all, of course, super important, right? It's really cliche to say that, but it um, knowledge is one thing, but applied knowledge is the key, right? So I knew that there were certain elements that made um, successful art or successful compositions in art and music or whatever. But that's all gained through through training. So the art school helped, art history helped because it opened my mind up to all the different movements in art and it kind of got me out of my little box to appreciate everything else. And that gave me a better sense of where I fit in in the art world so I can move forward as uh, more professional. So. so moving along, I got another one here for you. Uh, this, and this is a good one because we've all got uh, it doesn't matter what you do in life. There's always that one person that inspires you and encourages you to move forward in whatever it is that you love doing. So being your artwork, is there that one person or are we looking at multiple people? Like who really gave you that push and said, you know what, Jason, you can do this. If you want to do it, do it. And I'm behind you 150%. Just pick it up and run. 
Well, I don't think I have to go into too much length or detail on how, of course, my parents and my girlfriend have supported me. We we'll sit here all night and talk about that, right? So, with that said, I think there's two people who really stand out in the forefront for me. And that first would be Marsha Carroll. She um, used to own Precambrian Art Center or the Art Gallery Frame Shop. Um, like I said, she was the one who first sold my artwork for me. And as I grew up, she guided me into kind of the market that I needed to be in and gave me the advice on how to, to do a business. And then I've always sold with her and she's always treated me the same. No matter what I was going through, she always treated me kind of, you know, as somebody she cared about and I cared about my future and where I was going. And no matter what I was going through, she's just really supportive and always gave me really good advice in the business side, but also in the just the regular side of life and having a balance of work and family and friends. She was really good for telling stories and making you think and laugh and adding humor and time to your life. I really admire her for that and I thank her so much for that. And then second, on more of a professional level, would have to be Teresa Burroughs. I don't know if you've seen her work, but she's an amazing painter, awesome beadwork, well-rounded artist altogether. But the same thing, I grew up next door to her out at the lake, so she's always known me. She's always let me knew, know when the, the art shows were coming up or any sort of grants. Ever since I was, you know, just a teenager, until this day, she still sends me, you know, emails or, hey, go check this out. Like, she's always, no matter what happened to me, she's always treated me the same, never any different, just like a, a human being. Those two people stand out the most. That's awesome. Uh, you know, obviously you're going to touch base with family. Family yeah. you know, you can't do anything in life without family and friends. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's really awesome that you had that balance where you had somebody to actually show you the business side of it, you know, selling your product. Uh, and that's really important, um, especially when you're developing into the, uh, you know, sustaining your, your career, you know, paying the bills, so to speak. Yeah. And then to have that person that you had as a neighbor, we've known on a real personal level that, you know, encouraged you and said, hey, you know what, giving you the heads up on things going on. Mm -hmm. um, that's awesome. I could imagine it would be tough to have that talent and not have that backbone support. You know, things would be a lot different. You might have taken a completely different uh, life path, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and who knows where you would have been. It could be somewhere positive, it could be somewhere negative. Uh, but you know what? I'm, I'm absolutely happy that you've had those people encouraging your life and, mm -hmm. you know, it brought you here and it kept you here. Yeah, definitely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something at you and anybody who's seen any of your paintings is going to know exactly what I'm talking about. I see a lot of reference to the Northern Lights. Now, I understand we live in Thompson, Northern Lights is kind of a big thing here. Now, my question to you is, is this something that you do because you're good at it? Or is there, you know, some other kind of meaning? I mean, what, why do we see it referenced on so much of your artwork? Mm -hmm. Well, to be honest, when I first started out, I kind of fell into Northern Lights by accident. I was painting, doing odd jobs, doing helmets and stuff, and the, the back, my wall had a sheet on it, a black sheet. And I was airbrushing this helmet and I cleaned out my airbrush on the wall. I was working with greens. And on the black, it looked like Northern Lights. I was like, hey man, that kind of looks like Northern Lights. So I lined up a bunch of canvas and I've been painting Northern Lights ever since because of course, tourists love them. Like they sell pretty much instantly. Everybody loves the Northern Lights. So. When it first started happening, it was like an awesome business thing that fell into my lap. I seen something that worked, that was awesome, it was working, it was selling. So I just hopped on board right away because I had to pay bills. I was a starving artist and it was something that worked, right? I had to give people what they wanted to see. And to this day, I kind of fell in love with that application. So I pushed myself to make my Northern Lights even better, a little bit more fun, dramatic, express more expressive um, and now it's really about just making those um, 
kind of therapeutic paintings when you look at them you can see the lights you almost get that kind of breath of fresh air um, when you see the northern lights often they kind of stop you dead in your tracks and you're like it's the one thing that can actually captivate you and give you just a moment of peace when you're looking at it and then it's you know they're gone and it's over and then, but you always remember them right so exactly yeah and i think that's what like i really kind of i fell into them by accident but i fell more in love with them the more i worked on them now it's just it's my thing so that makes perfect sense mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really exciting too because the way that you do the artwork and from what i what my take on it would be is the the foreground is amazing you know whatever you put on the foreground i you i see that you put so much into it and it's great to see something where you're looking at a painting you're like wow like this is amazing and then you're oh wow like that's even more amazing like to have those two pieces of the artwork come together mm -hmm. and it's um it's kind of been your thing like everybody who knows jason lucas painting mm -hmm. knows that you're gonna have some form of that northern lights in there now do you think that's do you like that recognition? Mm -hmm. So you're like you're proud of that, that you feel that that's a, an accomplishment that when somebody sees a painting, they see the Northern Lights in there nine times out of 10, they're like, that's a Jason Lucas painting. Um, yeah, I think so. I think there, yeah, there's times where, um, yeah, they definitely can tell that it's, you know, it, it's kind of bright and it interprets as a Jason Lucas painting. Um, sometimes I'll see, it's funny you say that because sometimes I'll see something and I'll think, oh, there's one of my paintings because they kind of pop up everywhere now. And then I'll look and it'll be like something totally different, right? It'll right. just be a photo of Northern Lights. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it's kind of neat how it, it's kind of become my thing. I think what's interesting is is um, being able to evolve as an artist. Um, you see my, the airbrush work and the Northern Lights in my work. and. Lately, you kind of see different subject matters coming in with still the Northern Lights in the background. So slowly introducing new subject matters and having the paintings evolve and change over time is really exciting to look forward to because um, there's just so much possibilities in painting with the Northern Lights and the colors and stuff. Really trying to, to let go of any sort of rules and, and have fun with it. Well, that's good. And you know what? We are in the north. Northern Lights is, like you said, tourists, tourists eat this stuff up. Mm -hmm. And you're, when you're walking down the street, you see the Northern Lights. Uh, there's not a person I know that will not stop and look at it. And to have that implicated into your paintings is, is a brilliant idea. To be yeah. honest with you. Cool. Just a couple more questions for you. This one, uh, this, I see you around town uh, helping out with a lot of different organizations. Um, you do a lot of community work. I see you with uh, a lot of youth. And there's a, there's an emphasis on Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal. It, it really doesn't seem to matter. It just, I see you out there a lot. Um, do you, at this point in your life, see you as a, at yourself as a role model um, for the next generation of artists that are coming up? Uh, and if, if so, if you were to offer, uh, you know, that one piece of advice, uh, you know, as corny as it might sound, like this worked for me or this didn't work for you so I want you to do this or not to do this like what would you say um, what would be your, your gem that you would pass on to the next generation of uh, you know upcoming artists that's a good question <laughs> um, I think I have become a role model and I I'm totally happy with that I think everybody's kind of a role model in their own in their own sense in their own way in Thompson, I think it's really kind of easy to be a volunteer um, because there's so many great movements and organizations and people out there that need help. So for somebody like myself, um, I find it a really great opportunity to, to network, but also just to, to make friends and actually go out and enjoy some of the events that are going on. Often it can mean, you know, getting a, <laughs> getting in the door all weekend, you know what I mean, just because you're helping out, but, you know, that's just one of the perks, but when you go out and take part of those things, you really kind of understand and see that, you know, there are some really awesome things going on, and you mentioned the Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal things that are going on. Thompson is so much a multicultural place, and... I feel happy to be able to help out the Aboriginal Arts Centre as a, as a volunteer. Our last fundraiser was a multicultural event, so we had 
all sorts of artists, all different types of food being served from different backgrounds, different performers. So it's really about building relationships with everybody. And um, that's important because we're all kind of the same, you know. I'm an Aboriginal artist, um, but a lot of my art doesn't necessarily have like a lot of traditional Aboriginal content. Um, I was raised in a European family, so um, I see myself very much as a Canadian. I'm proud to be Aboriginal, but I'm very Canadian. And to be Thompson, a Thompsonite means kind of just to, to put all those kind of walls and uh, um, limits, discriminations well, we aside and totally and we're all kind of just going through it all together and we can recognize the demographic of the region as Aboriginal and they face, you know, different social and um, challenges and obstacles and we all kind of have an understanding and a respect for that so it's really easy to get out and be involved in, in this part, this special region, you know. So coming back to the question and my advice, I guess, for the the youth or upcoming artists, whether you're a, a visual artist or a performing artist or maybe you're not even in the arts, but you're coming up and life, there's so much negativity and through social media and television and it's really easy to get off track and to get stressed out. So my advice would just be first and foremost just to take care of yourself. Drink two glasses of water every morning, get your exercise, take care of yourself so that you can take care of your family because your family comes next and then your passions and your hobbies can come after that. And once you have those in line, then conquer those moments that bring you anxiety and fear. Put yourself in those situations that make you scared. Stay in those spots that make you want to leave or run away because those are the special moments in your life that are really making you feel alive. Those are the special critical moments where you can actually overcome some walls, break down some barriers and kind of progress. It's really easy to be, you know, oh, I don't want to do that, that's going to suck. It's really easy to be like, oh, I don't want to be here. Like, this is not for me. But to stand there and to face your fears and anxieties and to make it through it will make you such more of a stronger person. So you'll be able to help out your family when they need you. So that's what I tell them. That's awesome, and that really, uh, it sounds like advice that you would give to anybody regardless of what they're doing. Totally. Um, I'm going to throw something at you right now. Okay. Um, we live in Thompson. It's cold. Uh, what keeps you in Thompson? What keeps you staying here year after year? There's got to be something that has that, that draw. Because let's face it, you could do your artwork anywhere in Canada. Mm -hmm. Tourism is, is, is everywhere. Tourists will, will go all over the place. Um, but there has to be something in Thompson that, that's keeping you grounded here. What would you say that is? Um, it would definitely be the country and the landscape and the people, of course. Like, you guys are great and great friends and family, of course. But I think I've traveled all over and I've done shows all over. It's good to get away, but we do keep coming back to Thompson. There's something about... Um, the country and being so close to, to such a primitive spot. So there's some places here you can get to pretty fast and you can almost be guaranteed you might be the first person to ever step foot there. Um, you might have neighbors or friends that can come over and they'll slap down a fresh piece of moose meat right on your kitchen table or a frozen fish fresh out of the ice, you know what I mean? It's little things like that that kind of set Thompson apart. It's, it's kind of um, a gem and I think sometimes we can take it for granted because it gets cold and all that sort of stuff but when you have great people and a great imagination and an awesome attitude then Thompson's definitely a place to, to stick around and be a part of for that's sure. A, that's a really good answer. I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, I'm gonna. Have, this is gonna be a double header. Double header this is a double it. header. Uh, what is the one thing that you love the most about Thompson? And on the flip side of that, I want to hear the thing that you dislike the most about Thompson. Now, keep in mind, 
completely honest. You're not gonna hurt anyone's feelings. Uh, I really wanna know, you know, what do you love, but what do you hate about Thompson Manitoba? Mm -hmm. I love, I love the fact that um, you can just meet, you can meet people kind of instantly in Thompson from any sort of background. And right when you think you're having a really bad day, or it's just, you're not just, you're just having a bad day, you'll see something or someone will remind you of how good you actually have it. Or somebody will come up and tell you a story or introduce themselves to you and share their experience with you and then you actually realize that you're surrounded by, you know, some really, some really beautiful people. So definitely that's what I love about Thompson. What I really hate about Thompson I like, I like how you built that up. <laughs> you know, I really hate about Thompson. <laughs> I don't know if it's about Thompson, but for me right now, I'm having a really hard time with social media and a lot of the negative things that I'm seeing online. Um, I think it seems like it's Thompson because we live here and we're, we kind of follow our, our pages and our social networks and stuff. I think it's important to realize that the issues that Thompson does have kind of extend kind of everywhere. Um, with that said, it would be social media and people venting their 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 feelings and emotions online, which is kind of it's normal. Um, I'm guilty of it. Like we're all guilty of it. I've been guilty of it in the past, and I've kind of learned the hard way that um, when you're having those kind of feelings of hate or resentment or anything like that that it's important not to to boast that online or any sort of social media right away because everything online is just kind of set in stone eventually and you got to realize that you're going to leave a legacy no matter what you do here in thompson or anywhere you go so how you're acting online is everybody gets to see it so and it's kind of very it rubs off on people I can so, see it being tough too because it, it, it really hurts the interpretation. You can say something negative about the community you live in. You know, you can go on Facebook and say, you know what, the city doesn't do this, the city doesn't do that. Uh, you could be thinking it's constructive criticism, but really, what you know, four different people can read that same that same post and get four different opinions on what you're saying. And we do live in a small community. You know, we are a city, but it does have that small town feel to it. Uh, I, I absolutely agree with you that, uh, in a sense, there, there could be consequences to the stuff and the stuff that you post, once you see it, that's it, you can't erase it. Everyone's got a cell phone now, everyone's got smartphones, everything, you know, every, everyone sees everything, especially when it comes to social media. Uh, and it is definitely a bigger issue, but I absolutely agree. Uh, even for myself, that would definitely be one of the things that I think uh, would be a, a, a very negative attraction for Thompson is to seeing a lot of the stuff where... Well, yeah, we don't realize that when we're doing that, we're actually... There are actually people behind those feelings that you're kind of pinpointing and backing into a corner. Those people have... Um, they have feelings, they have families, and they're working really hard to do the best they can, you know? So you can't clear... You know, all the friggin' roads, tons of friggin' snow overnight, like it's not gonna happen, but you can best believe that they're out there trying their best, so you can only do so much. These guys are busting their butts, they have families, you know, they were put in a hard day's work. It's not anything you need to complain about, you know what I mean? We're used to driving on snowy roads, big deal, they'll get cleared when they get cleared. You can sit and whine about it, or you can go out and have some fun on the roads carefully, but you know what I mean? It's all... There's people behind those, people with feelings, and it's another sort of uh, form of bullying. You know, it doesn't stop after high school. Adults are bullying, and it's totally unacceptable. Thompson's an awesome place to kind of lead by example for other Canadian centers to kind of look at Thompson and go, look at this place. Well, Jason, it's been great sitting down here chatting with you in your studio. Uh, you know, I like. Uh, Talk a little about Thompson. We've talked a little bit about the, your past and your art and what you're doing for a living. Um, hope to be able to sit down with you next, you know, some other time when we do this. Uh, this is a project that uh, we're going to try to go a little further with it. We want to talk to other people, and you know, we want to hit uh, a lot of the community things. We want to go for the positive, the negative, uh, focus on Thompson and, the, and you know, the people in Thompson. So once again, man, 
Really appreciate it. Cool, it's been a lot of fun. And we don't have a name yet for actually this project that we're working on. So if any anybody who sees this, you kind of want to you know throw <laughs> throw me an email, uh, Dennis Foley at Live.ca. Give me some feedback uh, if you got an import, or you know what, even just tell us what you think about uh, everything we've done here today. So uh, until I see you guys again, thank you and have a good night. You know what, even just tell us what you think about uh, everything we've done here today. And uh, if you guys like it, uh, you know, I'm hoping I do like it. This is kind of a labor of love. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we don't completely suck. <laughs> I think, um... Hot cuts! <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then we'll roll credits.